Hi guys, now I have always tried to stay away from the environmental topic uh, when it concerns electric cars, whether they're greener or not greener. Quite frankly, it opens up a can of worms uh, and really divisive arguments that it just takes over the comment thread of any video I do. So I've always tried to not become a preachy when it comes to electric cars. I am a fan of electric cars. I have an electric car channel, of course, but I also consider myself a petrol head. I always have been, and I probably always will be. I love cars in general, whether they are electric cars or, or, or petrol powered cars. It's not a mutually exclusive thing. You can like both. To persuade people to go electric, you need to give a, a selfish reason for it. The reason I chose my electric car was to save money. That is a good enough reason for most people to switch. There are various other reasons to go down the electric route, um, but I think preaching to people is the last thing we should be doing. What does really get on my nerves though is when people use this phrase, and I see it a lot, that, uh, oh, I care about my child's future, so I bought an electric car. I don't want them breathing the particulates from blah, 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 blah. Now, although this may be true or not, I'll come to this in a minute, um, it's not something I want, I don't want this channel to become a preaching channel. I'm not trying to convert people. I'm saying, this is what they're like. This is the reality of them. I like petrol and electric cars. There's pros and cons to both. Um, but I think it's about time I do a video and mention the environmental side of things to try and create a discussion about this. That's discussion, not argument. There is a difference. So let's create a discussion in the channel um, or on, on Twitter. My handle is EVManUK. I'm always happy to have a discussion on there. So there's a few things I want to do uh, and I want to do both sides. I want to kind of acknowledge the the preachy side of EV ownership, the people who say that they care about their kids more than you because they've got an electric car. And then on the flip side of it, of where people say, oh, well, well all electric cars are coal powered anyway, so they're not cleaner. I'm gonna try and address a very broad, a very basic kind of genre on the subject and, and, and make your own mind up from what I describe on here. Now, the first one I might as well address is the age old comment I get on almost every video that I'm doing about a, an electric car, and that's that they are all coal powered and I'll say this now this is going to be UK based uh, video because I'm in the UK so this is about the UK side of things are we listening now because people tend to watch YouTube videos comment on them and then ask questions that have already been answered in the video um, so I appreciate sometimes people skim through stuff but it does make sense if you watch the whole whole video all of it so on to the comment of whether cars are coal powered or not I have various articles in front of me now and I will quote a little bit from this which kind of gives you an idea of what the actual power generation of uh, the UK is like and this is effectively what is fueling an electric car. So let's look at 2017 and UK power generation, this coal-fired car argument. How much of the total UK generation from 2017 was from coal-fired power stations? Feel free to pause the video now and put I think it's X percent in the comments now before I give you the answer. Now, unless you've looked into this before or read an article on it, you're probably wrong in how much coal generated. Last year, 2017, we generated 7% of our electricity from coal-fired power stations. So 7%, not 70, 7. Renewable energy accounted for 29% of that. And when I say renewable, that is wind, solar, hydro, and biomass. 21% came from nuclear energy and just under 40% came from gas. Low carbon sources, as it were, accounted for more than 50% of the UK's power generation. To put that in context, in 2010, it was about 22%, I believe. I don't they have the exact figures. In seven years, there's been a shift change. And that is growing. It's going to get bigger. So I imagine by 2020, it will probably be around the 60, 65% mark of low carbon sources, because there's nothing wrong with nuclear, uh, and gas use is also gonna presumably reduce as well. Storage of power using grid level batteries will obviously change the thing completely as well, because all that power you generate at night from wind, when there's no demand or little demand can be stored and used when there is demand so that things are going to change so this all coal powered argument of an electric car in the uk it just isn't true seven percent of uk electricity last year was come came from uk coal stations and that is reducing year on year gas obviously is still a relatively well it's a non-renewable dirty but cleaner 
than coal source. That is also reducing as well. So eventually, hopefully we'll get down to zero use for non-renewable sources. We're not there yet. I'm not saying it's, it's green, but the greener the grid gets, the greener the electric car gets in terms of fueling. Now, of course, that leads us on to the full footprint of the car, as in the total life cycle, the manufacturing of the car and the fueling of the car. There are two separate things, but ultimately interlinked. Now, I'm going to read off this article because they can say it better than I. Multiple studies do show that electric vehicles are far greener than comparable combustion engine cars, and the gap is widening every year, by which they mean that if you compare a Tesla against a BMW 7 Series, the Tesla is significantly greener on the whole life cycle, including the manufacturing of the car. And of course, the greener the grid gets, the greener the car gets. A lot of studies out there are comparing uh, a Tesla Model S against a micro car with a petrol engine in it. Very different things, because at the moment, there is a significant footprint, of course, on building an electric car. However, studies by car makers also support this as well. A Volkswagen life cycle report found that its e-Golf hatchback would reduce emissions by 26% versus a standard Golf when powered by EU electricity. If it was a total renewable energy source that it was fueled from, it would uh, be a reduction of 61% over the normal Golf versus the e-Golf. And remember that factors in the manufacturing of the car as well. A professor of energy studies at MIT, I would like to think they know what they're doing, has compiled data on many cars. They show that all electric vehicles produce fewer emissions over the life cycle than conventional cars of the same weight class. This holds true even when the electricity grid that powers them is mostly generated by fossil fuels. So ultimately, the life cycle is better for an electric car over a petrol one. That, that, that is what I am getting from this. Please feel free to comment on that. However, it does note that a Tesla, for example, is, a, is like the gas guzzling equivalent in electric car terms. So we don't want everybody to think that getting a Tesla or a high-end Tesla is suddenly the best thing to do. The best thing you could do is replace a small petrol car with a small electric car. This goes on to say that um, regulators will need to treat electric vehicles like they do fridges. There's a labelling scheme on a fridge um, that tells you how much electricity the fridge consumes. So to have an equivalent sort of uh, rating system, you know, A, B, C, D, for cars would make sense because an electric car might be greener than the equivalent petrol, but a gas guzzling electric car, so to speak, or an electric guzzling electric car, isn't as good as a tiny, small petrol car, if you know what I mean. So, so we, have to, we have to do equivalents here. We have to think about it. So put very, very basically, electric cars are greener than petrol cars, including the life cycle, including the lithium and cobalt and all the nasty stuff that has to be mined. I am quite certain that in the future, 10, 20, 30, 40 years from now, batteries will get to the point where they do not need uh, cobalt and lithium, or at least not in the same quantities. Technology will solve the problem, I hope, that, uh, that the batteries cause at the moment, which is basically mining things and destroying the area that the batteries are created from. According to this lab, the i3 is the greenest car available by life cycle emissions. BMW claims the production of the model uses 70% less water and 50% less energy than a conventional BMW. So I think we can safely say uh, even in a very basic way that the greener electric cars are greener than petrol cars and certainly diesel cars can we agree on that it's not just a, a local emission thing of course zero emission at the car end will make the air more breathable for people walking past but ultimately there is a, a net gain from switching to electric in the UK at least so should, can we agree with that let me know what you think in the comments so on to the flip side of the coin, the, the phrase I always use that I see that, that gets on my goat, even as an electric car owner, is that people kind of preach to other people saying that they care about their, their kids, their family, more than the other person because they've got an electric car. Now, be under no illusions, electric cars are greener than petrol cars, but they are still bad for the environment. That is what I get from every piece of research I have done on this topic. Electric cars are bad for the environment. It is a fact, no one can argue that. They are better than a petrol or diesel engine car, but ultimately not good. 
personal transportation is bad for the environment. So my response to anybody that says that they care about their kids more than you care about yours because of the electric car decision is that if they truly cared about the environment and their children, they wouldn't have a car. Personal transportation is bad. Cycle, walk. If that's your priority in life, that's what you should be doing. Now, as I've said many times before, it's just not practical for the majority of people to keep up a car. I couldn't work without personal transportation. I couldn't get to work. My wife would not be able to get home from work because by the time she finishes, there are no public transport options available. Uh, I'm, yes, taxis, I guess, would be an option, but would be ultimately very, very expensive. So I'm not going to try and preach to anyone and say, go to electric to save the environment because ultimately it's not true. This is why we need to persuade people to get into electric cars um, in a different way. I go down the, you, should, you save money. Who can't argue with that? You save money by buying an electric car over a new petrol car. I save a ton of money on the miles I do. So that's a good reason to go just there. And it has the added bonus of being environmentally better. Uh, and this is kind of the problem I have with people that really shove stuff down your throat on the environmental side of it. You can't have a pet dog and then bang on about being an environmentalist because I remember reading somewhere that dogs are bad for the environment. They eat, they consume and they die and they're not part of the food chain so ultimately a dog is bad for the environment. I mean, come on, where, where does it stop? Ultimately, nearly everything we do is bad for the environment, it seems. The grid is the greenest it's ever been. Over 50% now from low carbon sources. I must admit, I was surprised before I looked this up that only 7% of electric came from coal. Seven. And that is by far the most common question I get. What do you think? Does the environmental part of owning a car make a difference to you? Have you learned anything new from this video? Did you know about the power grid? Did you, uh, do you agree with me about the preachy side of the uh, kind of eco-mentalist, and dare I say it, argument. Uh, do you, does that put you off? Does, does people preaching to you put you off? Because I know it does me. So again, please discuss it in the comments below. Remember to click the reply button on a comment. Don't put a new comment when replying to another comment. Some people don't seem to figure out how YouTube works. Would an equivalent electric car make you change things? I mean, I've had a few discussions recently where people would say that they would pick a Porsche GT3 RS over uh, a Tesla. And they'll probably be right, I know I would. But if Porsche, I mean, did a proper Porsche GT3 RS electric version, so you've got basically the same car, one's electric, one's petrol, both developed and manufactured by Porsche, would that change, uh, change what you do? Would that change what you buy? Lots to think about, lots to discuss. So uh, thanks for watching and I will see you soon.